Hello everyone, this is Data from JGX and in today's video we are going to talk about skill tree. First, we're going to talk about the differences between techs. So the skill tree difference between clan and near sphere. Then we're going to talk about the differences between weight classes and tonnage. And then I'm going to show you some uh, properly done skill trees because honestly I've been looking around some videos on the internet about people who tell you how to do skill trees and 99% of those is just a big pile of garbage done by people that just don't have enough competence to talk about the topic. So first we go into the tech difference. The first difference is the laser duration. Inner sphere laser duration nodes are 3.75 each. Instead, the clan laser duration ones are 2.5. The second difference uh, is the cooldown. Uh, first of all, these differences are all in favor of inner sphere. So it's safe to say that inner sphere has a stronger skill tree compared to clans. The second difference is the cooldown. Every Inner Sphere mech has a cooldown of 0 0.75 boost per node, when on the clans instead it's just 0 0.6 per node. Uh, does this make a difference? I think it does, especially on the cooldown. Uh, you can uh, see that mechs, for example, with ACs, 6 AC2s, fully skilled clan, versus 6 AC2s, fully skilled inner sphere, even just with the sound, with your ears, you can clearly hear that the inner sphere ACs are shooting faster. Uh, the other thing to notice is the skill tree difference between tonnages. Basically, every tonnage has its own survival tree and uh, the survival tree is very very weak for the 100 tonners and very very strong for the 20 tonners uh, so pretty much on a 20 to 40 tonner it's basically mandatory to put almost full survival tree because they get so much out of it while on the 100 toners, you can actually skip some of it, if not most of it, because the buff is just minor. In fact, on the 100 toners, you see armor hardening 1%, skeletal density 2.5. So instead of 1% and 2.5%, on the 20 tonnes is 2.6 and 4.1. So the percentual gap in terms of survival is between the 20 tonnes and 100 tonnes is shorter, smaller, the more nodes you put. So basically in 20 tonner, 30 tonner, 40 tonner, you must spam survival tree because you, you really get a lot out of it because say plus eight on a flea is a whole other story than plus eight on a dark wolf. The meaning of the armor is more if the component is small and the mech moves fast. This is in my opinion one of the things that break the game at the comp level um, with lights because most people don't even know how important the survival tree is on lights, but every comp player knows this. So uh, good people just spam shitload of survival on these lights and, and it, it gets to, to ab absurd levels. Like for example, if you fully, um, if you put full survival tree or close to it on a flea, If you put full survival tree on a flea, uh, if you add armor 
and structure, you could basically take a dual heavy gauze heat in the CT and you wouldn't die. Because it's just more than 50. Or you could take double AC20 on a side torso, you wouldn't die. And the difference with or without the skill tree is massive. As for the quirks, uh, it's well known that the skill tree quirks the quirks themselves. So if you have a mech with armor boost, for example, an atlas, that percentual buff is going to apply to the base armor and it's going to apply to this armor buff that you see here. So it's going to, it is going to apply to the base level of armor and also to this 36, 30, 30 and so on. So if you have to choose between armor and structure, uh, you choose related to what your mech has. So if your mech has armor quirks, you try to go for armor. If it has structure quirks, uh, you try to go for structure more than armor. Now, something about how to set up a mech. Let's say that one thing that most people just don't do is to put almost full weapon tree. Let's, let's say that we're talking about uh, a generic laser vomit. On, web, or on mechs that engage from mid-range up, it's basically mandatory to put almost full weapon. Range, because when you shoot out of range, the range quirk is basically a damage quirk. So full range is mandatory if you're using laser vomits or mechs, like from mid-range up. Laser duration, of course, it's always needed on everything that has lasers. Uh, heat, of course, you need heat, because heat determines how much you farm. If you don't have heat, you overheat and you die. And then depending on how many heat sinks you have, operations. On the operations, this is what you do to achieve the maximum with the least amount of nodes spent. What you need here is cool run. Cool run is a buff to the heat dissipation rate of your heat sinks. So the more heat sinks you have, the more this node is going to work. Heat containment instead is how tall your bar is. Uh, since double heat sinks don't have a lot of heat capacity, you need heat containment a lot on mechs with standard heat sinks. For example, annihilator with 35, 40 standard heat sinks. This is the best way to achieve the maximum number of cool run with the least amount of nodes spent. Like this is how you should build your operation. If you want half of it, you just go this way. Zoom, just because I, I like to have zoom on max that should act from 400 meters up. This is if, if you want to do a double air strike. I don't like artillery strikes at all uh, because I think that they do just less. Honestly, each bomb does less damage, five instead of seven, but they spread all over the place and I like to aim the strike and hit where I want to hit. If you have skill, use airstrikes. If you don't have skill, use artists. You need enhanced spotting if you're using artists. You don't need enhanced spotting if you're using airstrike. Then if you want to go for the cool shot, you just go like this and you go double airstrike and one cool shot. Um, spam survival, because the Black Knight has a lot of survival. Uh, Cool down, you don't need cool down, of course you don't need velocity because you don't have projectile based weapons. Cool down, you don't need cool down on laser vomit, so these are the nodes that you can skip while still retaining max heat gen, max range, and max laser duration. One, two, three, four, five, you can skip six cool down nodes. Uh, as for the survival, the most efficient path is 
If you have AMS, you go this way, otherwise you go this way. This is like the most efficient path. Once you've done this, you start doing this. And then you do this and this. Like, the most efficient one is like this. Then you keep going. If for some whatever reason you cannot put even this, just get rid of it and put rate of deprivation. So this is for a generic laser vomit. Um, let's see if you have a long range Mac, for example, a direwolf without TCM. Since you have Gauss, you need velocity. Magazine capacity and maybe Gauss charge to keep it whole, to hold the Gauss for longer. Uh, velocity, basically, uh, a rule is that every time you have a projectile weapon that is not meant only for brawl, you must have velocity, especially now, because the way I see it, uh, the agility pass is overbuffed on many lights and many mediums, uh, and the projectile weapons are suffering because uh, most fast mechs move way too fast, it's the turn rate, they change direction, they stop, they accelerate, they decelerate way too fast and they are able to dodge the bullets. So buffing your velocity makes the difference between hitting the target and not hitting it. So you go this way with the velocity, you get rid of some armor, you keep, this is, this is just the best, like if you have heat sinks, you must run operations because it just buffs your heat sinks. You farm more. And, and if you are like, oh, but I don't overheat, I don't need it, blah, blah, blah. You don't overheat because you don't farm. That's it. Because if you're good and you put yourself in a good place to fight, to shoot, you always overheat. It just depends on how good you are. I had a, a quarrel uh, with, I'm not just, I'm not gonna say it, his name of course, uh, I got a, a quarrel inside the cauldron with an idiot that that was like, oh the most important quirk for the Phoenix Hawk uh, is the range, it's not the HSL, because the amount of extra heat that you gain with the HSL is nothing. And he was running some sort of bullshit with, uh, with a big engine, something like this. He was like, hmm, I don't overheat. Even without HSL, I wouldn't overheat. I was like, dude, even with more heat sinks and even with the HSL, I still overheat. Heat stops you from farming. So want, what you want in a mech is all the heat gen nodes and all the operations like this because heat stops you from playing the game and if you're not overheating it just means that you're playing like shit that's it so remember how important it is to put operations and uh, heat nodes and then let's move to PPC DACA PPC DACA also relies on cooldown. This is a weird one because you need, you just don't need the laser duration because you don't have lasers. But you need full cooldown and full velocity because you are DPS based mech. You could skip maybe some range or you just put the range and get rid of some armor. But again, if a mech has a lot of armor quirks, you want to go for armor because you get the double buff. It just depends if your mech has the quirk or doesn't have the quirk. For example, a Banshee has a lot of armor quirks. So you want all the armor nodes. A Mad Cat Mark II doesn't have them. So you may just strip these three and put the extra range. Um, for the Brawlers, um, it's different. Because for the Brawlers, you're basically face-hugging and uh, if you're face hugging, you don't need all the range. Also, um, 
maybe you don't even need all the cooldown because you're an alpha strike mech. What you need in a brawler is almost full survival, full hit efficiency. So you may skip something here and there. The skippable ones, if you have missiles, you go this way on the missile spread, you can skip to range here. If you choose to go this path, even if you don't have LBX, you just spare one node because you could go like, go like this, but you have used an extra node. So I, even if I don't have LBX, I go this way. If you're using small lasers, maybe you don't need all of it. The point is that you need more shit to put into survival, especially if you have a mech with a lot of survival quirks. Similar, similar stuff you, you do on, uh, on a pseudo light, an MPL one. Example, on these mechs, generic laser vomit one, but uh, you need a lot of armor. Some, uh, th this is weird. Um, the agility is another thing that you may put, you may not. Uh, you could honestly go like this, put extra cool shots and so on. Uh, the point is that this percentage that you see here, 3.5, is not actually 3.5, is 3.5% of the base value. So if your base value is very high, it makes half sense to put something into it. But if you are a heavy or an assault, this one is meaningless. It's completely meaningless. Just to show you what we are talking about. If you take a Mac with a lot of base agility, like the Mistlings G, it has 95 XL, 150 D cell. So 150 D cell. If we spam just this part of the tree for the XL D cell, just getting rid of it just to show you. Whatever, we're gonna bump. Just doesn't give. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna put it back, but I just don't care. I have just everything, so that doesn't matter. Uh, from 95, it goes to 113, and one, from 150, basically to 170. I've gained 20 D cell and almost 20 X cell. So it does a lot of difference. Instead, if your base value is a big pile of shit, like this, for example, you have 9.6 XL acceleration rate. If Even if we spam this sort of tree, I'm gonna just grab the skill tree later on from another Mac, whatever. It went from 9.6 to 11.6. Like it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. You should never use the agility tree unless you have at least 70, 60 Axel D surveys. So basically heavies and assaults just don't have an agility tree. They don't. This one is pretty much useless. Maybe you need this in comp if you want to spare one jump jet and have your jump jets, your single jump jet last for longer if you need to get on top of something. These ones, the heat shielding ones, you need them on max with a lot of jump jets. Example, Mistlings Viper, because your jump jets will produce less heat when putting these. But it's noticeable only on max that have to spam jump jets a lot to bug the heat reg, and they had that have a lot of uh, jump jets. Uh, as for the Lurmers. For the Lurmers, you want the target DK. Target DK dictates how long you keep the lock once the mech goes in cover. So on a Lurm boat, you want this. You 
can get rid of armor because on alert armor most likely you stay in cover and using direct lock you won't hit because you want to just farm once the enemy is locked cool shot and generic weapon three on some very specific mechs example hit neutral ones like this seven small lasers it's hit neutral you can skip the heat gen you can also skip the operations because it's completely heat neutral even this way and you can put agility and, and other stuff um, as for the auxiliary you need uavs in comp most likely and capture assist in comp too but in quick play you, you don't really need that you could but you don't really need that as for the the ppc mech just pure ppcs I suggest you to, to go like this, you just skip this part. Uh, you don't need that extra 1% range, it's like 2-3 meters. The Warhawk has a lot of... Uh, you could honestly, honestly like this, because the Warhawk has a lot of uh, structure quirks. You could go like this, on a pure PPC mech. That cooldown doesn't make the difference. You don't want the problem about PPCs is that you to go here, you need to take one of these three, and you don't need anything. This on a PPC Mac. So in the end, you don't really need survival that much on all the Macs. What you need most of the time is full range, full heat, full velocity if you have ballistic weapons. Radar deprivation, honestly, unless you have 100%, it's basically useless because the, miss the missiles are so fucking fast that unless you have a locust or a wolfhound, a Vulcan, 60% is not enough. Because by the time the enemy loses the lock, the missiles are already on you. As for the consumables, double strike, one cool shot is more than enough. Agility is, is completely useless for everything that, it, that is just a heavy or an assault. Uh, and that's it. Like, uh, just a few exceptions. We could talk about the MRMs. The MRMs, you can't use them at their optimal range because the, the projectile velocity is too slow. So you can cut some range on the MRM-based max. You can cut some. You won't. And you spam, again, a lot of survival. If the mech is cold enough, you can skip a part of the operation. And don't get fooled by the DACA max. Like, for example, uh, most people think, oh, okay, it's a DACA mech. I'm not going to put operations, no, you need operations, basically, everywhere. Because a DACA mech is a DPS mech, and you don't do DPS if you overheat and shut down. Well, guys, that's it for today. I think we got covered at least the most basic things for quick play and faction play. Of course, in faction play, you could put some more radar deprivation instead of some armor but to me I like a mid-range max full range full heat full cool run full laser duration is basically mandatory uh, i hope this helped you guys and if you enjoyed the video remember to press the subscribe button thank you and i'll catch you next time